Hey guys, today on JD Cars, we'll be doing a sound system installation on my Aquasport 175 Osprey. This is obviously a bit different for a car channel, but I figured what the heck. So just to start off, we'll do a little unboxing here so you can see everything that's included. So we have speaker wires, we have the main wiring harness for the stereo and a fuse. They're also nice enough to include a waterproof case for your phone. We have the installation guide. So this is your multifunction remote here, which goes into the dash of the boat. You can control pairing, pause and play, increase volume, decrease volume, skip track, previous track. You can also change the source and turn it on and off, of course. Got a hose clamp mount here. Got the main amplifier itself, which does feature Bluetooth, and it's got a nice hefty weight to it. Also got some more hardware in this little box here. We have the USB and auxiliary input. So you can use a USB input, such as a lightning cable or micro USB, or just the standard 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Now we've got the main speakers themselves which look great. They have a nice hefty weight to them as well. And we have three more speakers here. So the packaging for the speaker is actually a perfect template to trace a hole for the speaker. That way you can make a perfect cut for the speaker and not make a hole that's too large. Okay, first thing we have to do is determine where on the boat we want to locate the speakers. It's important to keep in mind when determining these locations that the speaker should be facing the listener's ears for optimal sound. I've chosen to locate a speaker on the port and starboard side of the bow here. I'll mount one right here and another on the opposite side right about here. That should provide pretty good sound for the passengers in the bow area. Now for whoever is operating the boat or sitting back at the helm, I'll put a speaker on the port side of the console here and one in the same location except on the starboard side. So I'm gonna take some masking tape here and put it around the perimeter of this template so we can affix it to the side of the boat. Now I'm probably gonna wanna put it just about here, but because I don't want it to look sloppy or just randomly placed, I'm gonna measure out so that the circle is in the center, so that the circle is in the middle between the deck here and this top edge. Now we can go ahead and trace around the inside of the circle, and then we'll have a nice line to follow with our jigsaw. Now we can remove the template, which we can reuse for our other holes as well. Now we've got a nice line to follow with our jigsaw. Now you need to get your drill and a drill bit, which is slightly larger than the blade on your jigsaw. You're gonna want a blade that has pretty small teeth as we're working with a hard, strong material. Now we're gonna take our drill here and go inside the circle. Just to be careful, we'll leave a little bit of room so that we don't go outside the circle. Now if you're cutting in a tight space like me, you may run into this issue where you can't turn the saw any further. However, I did successfully make it past halfway around the circle. So I can just start back at the top here in the hole and work my way around until I meet up with the other end of the cut. <laughs> Whoops. Well, now we've got a nice clean hole here. I'm gonna have to retrieve that cutout from down in the bilge but I'm pretty happy with how this has come out. I grabbed one of the speakers here so we can test the fit and looks great. It's a nice flush fit all the way around the edge and doesn't move around too much at all actually. Now to get our speaker wire from this location over into the console where the amplifier will live, I'll be using a cable snake. Now you can really use anything that's stiff enough to fish through the boat but I prefer to use these because they work really well. So we're just gonna put it in the hole here and pull it out as we need to, pushing it back towards the console. Now there's a little access port back by the console here and hopefully we can retrieve the cable snake right here and we can pull the wire through from the console up to the speaker. So I successfully got the cable snake to come through this port here. Now I can just take the wire and feed it through from the console, attach it to the cable snake, and pull it up to the back. Now 
Now so we don't lose our cables here, we're gonna go ahead and attach them to the speaker. Now we're gonna go ahead and put it inside the hole here and we're gonna get it oriented properly and then using our Sharpie, we're gonna mark the holes that we're gonna drill. So I've got it positioned how I like. I'm gonna take my Sharpie and mark the holes that I need to drill. Now using a drill bit that's slightly smaller than the screw for your speaker, we're gonna go ahead and drill those holes. Now we can apply the included gasket to the back side of the speaker to create a nice watertight seal. Just gonna go ahead and peel off the adhesive backing here. And now we can carefully line this up. Now with the gasket on there, we can go ahead and install the speaker on the side of the boat. Nice and snug, and there's a nice flush fit all the way around the speaker. Now that the bass speaker is done being mounted, I'm gonna go ahead and move on to installing the speaker here on the side of the console. It's virtually the same process, however, before you go ahead and drill or cut a hole in the side of your console, it's important to look inside to make sure there's nothing obstructing the area, such as wires, a steering cable, or anything else that you don't wanna get damaged. So again, we're gonna fit it in the hole and measure or eyeball until you have it about level and go ahead and grab your Sharpie and mark the four holes. Now we need to determine a location for our control panel, but first we need to pop the control panel out of the mount here. I'm just gonna use a little drill bit, pop that out of the mount. Now uncoil this wire here, and we can remove the mount so we can go ahead and trace it. All right, now we've got the mount and we can lay it flush on the console, wherever we wanna mount this for our control panel. I like this location right here, so I'm gonna go ahead and lay the panel down here, get it centered and trace it. So because this is a recessed location and it's kind of awkward to get a jigsaw in there, in fact, it's pretty much impossible to get a jigsaw inside there, I had to use the drill to just drill out holes to essentially cut this out. And obviously it's a bit rough around the edges, but we got the basic shape. Now we can fix it up with a file to make it look nice. And now we can take the control panel and fit it into place. Next I'll be replacing the regular 12 volt cigarette lighter with the included USB and 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. We're inside the console here looking at the back of the dash and right there is the 12 volt outlet. There's this threaded collar on the back of the outlet. I'm just gonna go lefty-loosey to remove it. I'm just gonna go ahead and remove the connections from the back of the outlet here. Got that off and now we can go ahead and push the outlet out. Okay, so we got this USB and 3.5 millimeter input port installed with this nice little waterproof cover. So now we can move on to mounting the amp. Now obviously the amp is a crucial part to any sound system, so we're going to want to make sure that we mount this somewhere high and dry where it's not going to get wet. After inspecting all the walls on my console here, it seems that the back wall there and the side wall are both too thin and the only place appropriate to mount it is right here where it's a bit thicker for mounting things such as an amplifier. Obviously, like anything else, you're screwing into a fiberglass, go ahead and mark your holes and pre-drill before screwing it in. All right, so we've got the amp mounted up there and now it's time for the fun part, wiring. So we're gonna go ahead and wire everything up according to this included wiring diagram in the manual. 
We only really have to make about eight connections between the wiring harness here and eight of these speaker wires. Now I'm gonna make the speakers in the console channel one left and right and then the speakers up in the bow are gonna be channel two. So that means the right speaker in the console here needs to get hooked up with the two gray wires and the left speaker from the console here needs to get hooked up with the white and the white and black wire. Same thing goes for the speakers up in the bow green and green and black, violet and violet and black. So we'll be hooking up the positive speaker wire, which is the red one, to the plain white cable from the wiring harness, and then the white cable from the speaker to the white and black cable from the wiring harness. I'm gonna do so with some button connectors here, so I'm just gonna put this on negative to negative, spin it a bit to get the wires to catch, grab our crimp tool here, and Go to the red one and crimp it down nice and tight. Okay, so the negative wire is hooked up nice and snug. Now we're gonna do the same with the positive wire. All right, once you've got your four speakers hooked up, we're gonna go ahead and connect the two orange wires here to illuminate the controller. I currently don't have a use for the remote out cable, so I'm just gonna leave that unconnected for now. And the pink cable is your Bluetooth antenna, so we're just gonna leave that unconnected as well. That just leaves us with three simple wires remaining. That's the ground, the power wire, and the ignition cable, which turns the unit on. However, don't forget to make these connections the corresponding connections on the amplifier. This ground connection is too small to fit onto my battery, so I'm just gonna chop it off and connect one of my own, which is gonna fit on the terminal of my battery. So now I've got a ground connection, which fits on my battery, and I'll be doing the same thing with the power and ignition wires. Now all that's left to do is hook these up to my battery and test out the system. All right, I've got the system hooked up to my battery here, and we're gonna go ahead and test it out. All right, so I'm gonna hold down on the power button here to turn it on. So there it is, new devices down at the bottom here. I'm going to click that to go ahead and connect, and it just connected. That was pretty quick. So let's go ahead and try to play some music here. Immediately, I'm extremely impressed with the sound quality and how powerful these speakers are. It's excellent. So, let's go ahead and test out the functions here. We'll try skipping a track. That works as well. And then previous track brings us back. So, two taps to go back a song. Volume up. So overall, right off the bat here, I'm extremely impressed with these speakers. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please leave a like below and subscribe if you've yet to do so. Thanks guys. I'll see you next time on JD Cars.